So for my unit of instruction, I titled it Exploring Color Through Acrylic Painting. My enduring idea is over time and across cultures, artists have utilized color to convey important information within their paintings, including underlying themes, emotions, identity, atmosphere, and space. This is for grades six through seven. My unit rationale. Artists of every color and culture across history have utilized color to convey certain underlying themes and emotions, identities, atmospheres, and space in different and unique ways, depending on the customs and norms of a given culture or group. Studying various artists and their works from different cultural backgrounds allows students to explore perspectives outside of their own perception and make connections between groups of people. By examining the cultural significance of color in various works of art, students learn to appreciate other people and the unique and valuable experiences that people from various walks of life have to offer while beginning to contemplate their own emotions and those of others. So artworks, so I would give about a 15 minute class discussion, including the integrated performance test. So that would be included with the 50 minutes. So first I would go over a little bit about Leonardo da Vinci. Um, I think that's really important just because he used color to convey atmospheric perspective. Um, I would explain this to my students more and go into depth about contrast and how the contrast between light and dark dominates elements of the foreground while all objects in the background appear less clear and precise and in da, Vinci, in da Vinci's case often appear blue. So I would ask the students questions and try to facilitate a class discussion. I have some questions I would pose at the bottom of my slides as well. So I'd go into Western culture a bit as well, the origins of Western culture, viewing um, light and dark and associating, associating that with good and evil. Um, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe was a German poet who interpreted the moral and religious significance of color, white as the purest light and black as pure evil. For Goethe, blackness is not merely the absence of color, but the presence of good. For African-Americans, however, blackness has come to represent the opposite. So then I would go into a discussion about the civil rights movement in the United States, how that gained momentum in the 60s. And with this, Blackness became a sense of pride for African-Americans and people of color. Um, Ralph Ellison warned African-Americans not to be absorbed into white society in his novel Invisible Man in 1952. As a result, Black is Beautiful became the rallying cry of the Black Power movement. People began viewing black as a beautiful color composed of all other colors. This concept is then conveyed in Ben Jones' black face and arm unit created in 1971 in which he decorated casted life-size hands and faces in a series of ornaments and bands that alluded to ancient African sculpture. The work marks a celebration of African cultural identity. So then I have some questions relating to the colors displayed, how this evokes emotion within you, um, how does the piece make you feel, how does the subject of the piece alter the way you interpret it, what does it make you think about the group of people it's meant to represent. So then I would go on to talk about the synthetic forms of paint, because that's what this unit is about. And they originated in the 1900s and developed as a means of alternative to the slow drying, difficult to use traditional forms of oil paint. Synthetic painting was pioneered by a group of Mexican painters known as Los Tres Grandes, or the Big Three. Among them was artist da David Alfaro Siqueiros, whose enamel paintings is displayed to the left. Note the use of color, warm colors, cool colors, complementary colors, value to create mood and atmospheric perspective. So then I would go on to ask some questions about that. Again, focusing on color and how this affects the way we interpret the piece. So then I would talk about Helen Frank Veller, who used water-based acrylic paint when it came out in 1956 to stain her canvases. This allowed her to avoid the muddy rings that would often form around her oil paint stains as a result of the chemical reaction between oil and water. So I would again compel the students to contemplate the emotion or mood evoked in this piece based on its color. 
and how she kind of uses light and dark to create that contrast. So my integrated performance task um, is a postcard to a friend. For the objective, students will be able to inquire about, about their peers' main takeaways from the lessons and thoughtfully respond to them. Students will be able to articulate and utilize art vocabulary discussed in the lesson to frame their questions and responses to peers. Students will be able to hypothesize about the implications of color pertaining to cultural values and norms, and students will be able to reflect upon the emotions that we associate with color and how this may vary across cultures. So my example, I just kind of have like, dear fellow student, of course, you'd replace that with the name of your partner or table mate. And then I just want them to pose two questions addressing the concepts from this lesson. So that's like mood, culture, and color, and the vocabulary, atmospheric perspective, value, and contrast to frame these questions to a fellow student. The student would then have about five minutes to respond to their peers. So for my studio lesson number one, I have a brochure with gray and color value scales. So the assignment is completing gray and color value scales on mixed media pa paper provided by myself using acrylic paints with five different values starting with the lightest lights and ending with the darkest darks. And that will be based on a teacher-led instruction, I'm sorry, demonstration. When finished with the gray and value scales, I'll have the students cut them out and glue them into the brochure, writing a two to three sentence explanation of the process of making that went into those, as well as the emotions that they associate with the chosen color of their scale. Oh, oh technical difficulty, sorry. Oh. All right, one moment. <laughs> okay. Back to where we were. Oh my goodness. Okay, so then along with this assignment, I'll have them pick one of the artworks that resonated with them from a less from the lesson, or they could conduct a bit of research on their own, um, finding an artwork that they would like to use. And they could use sources like JSTOR or MoMA. And the artwork should be culturally relevant to them and exhibit color in ways that affect the emotional experience of the viewer. They then would print the image and paste it on a separate page of the brochure, including three paragraphs about the artwork. One paragraph should discuss the artist's background and life. One paragraph should discuss the use of color. And one paragraph should explain the artist's or the work's cultural relevance. So then this is just kind of how I would have them set it up. This would be the, um, the title would go on the front the um, then you would open it and see the value scales then on the back would be the two to three sentence detailing process and emotion of color on the inside then you open up the first page to the picture of the art and then you'll have the three paragraphs kind of following that like i explained so i included a checklist of everything the students need to include i just had that for their own benefit it's not part of the assessment so some key concepts, the colors used by artists in paintings evoke certain emotional experiences within the viewer. These emotional experiences vary across cultures. Color can be used to create perspectives in a work of art, and color can be used to portray a certain theme or message in a work of art. So then I just framed these concepts as questions. They're all listed there, um, kind of redundant at this point. So the studio one, the studio lesson one rationale, in order to progress with this unit of instruction, students must know how to mix and alter color by adding white to create tints and black to create shades of a given hue. By looking at artists from various cultures and analyzing their works, students learn to value others' experiences and become confident in their abilities to utilize art vocabulary to articulate their ideas and discuss works of art. By contemplating what color means to them, students become aware of their own emotional associations with color and make connections by comparing, comparing their values 
with other peoples. So my lesson objectives, students will be able to conduct research about painters who utilize color to convey certain themes, emotions, perspectives, and space in their works. Students will be able to reflect on how the cultural experiences of other people affect their interpretation of works of art. Students will be able to articulate their ideas in written responses, and students will be able to compose their own value scales using acrylic paint in both black and white and a color of their choice. Lastly, students will be able to reflect on their process of making and their own emotional associations with and surrounding color. So my national standards, analyze ways that visual components of cultural associations suggested by images influence ideas, emotions, and actions, and analyze how art reflects changing times, traditions, resources, and cultural uses. So assessment artifact number one, I chose to do a circle graph rating scale. So I just kind of explained what I was thinking with this a bit. Um, so they would be given this rating scale like first before they do the assignment just so they know what the expectations are. I would go over it with them. I would ask them questions. I would prompt them to ask questions for clarification as they need. I might explain what I mean by personal signature and I'll show you that just like I kind of want them to put their own flair in the assignment. But after students complete the integrated performance task, I would give them little stickers that they could place by the number corresponding with the anchor that they feel they earned on the activity. I would then circle the grade that I determined they deserve and place a document in their portfolio. So this is what that um, task looks like um, or what that chart looks like. And I have um, all the categories here. So analysis skills, technical skills, research skills, media skills, expressive skills, creative skills, critical thinking skills, and attitude. And then I have the anchors here with their little like rubric. And they can just, like I said, use the stickers to document what, how they think they did on this assignment. So assessment artifact two is a value and grayscale rubric. I would use these together to grade that assignment, kind of looking at different aspects um, separately, at least for this one, and then all together for the previous one. So that's what that looks like. Um, I liked in the text, it used the rad, like as like, um, vocabulary that your students might resonate with. So like really artistically developed is that exceptional category. Satisfactory is like where I'm expecting everyone to fall. So I'll just read that. So the gray scale students illustrate a gradual shift from light to dark, gray values are well mixed and gray scales adequately rendered. For the color scale, Students illustrate a gradual shift from light to dark in a color of their choice. When compared to their gray scale, the values are well matched. For tinting, for their color scale, the, col the students demonstrate an understanding of how to use white paint to create a tint that correlates with the values on their gray scale. For their color scale, then for shading, the student demonstrates an understanding of how to use black paint to create a shade that correlates with the values on their gray scale. So then my proposal for studio lesson two, I'm thinking that I will let students um, kind of take a more in-depth look at their brochure, their colors, like reflect on those ideas and come up with um, a large scale painting that they would do, still thinking of color, um, color and how this can convey themes of identity, culture, um, how it can convey perspective. Um, I just really want it to be like relevant to them and prompt them to think about emotion in relationship to other people, how other people from other cultures um, might experience emotion differently and how they might even experience color differently. So that is my presentation and that is my plan. <laughs> Hope you liked it.